What's up guys? Joe Munoz, OneStepPrep.com. Hope y'all are doing well. If you don't know, I'm a drummer. I'm a guitar player. Do a bunch of different things musically. Anyway, the point of the video is not to play you a song on a drum or on a guitar. Unless you want me to, leave it in comments below. But really, the point of the video is to talk about stall recovery. I got a couple videos talking about this. I just got done with a sim and I was talking about how historically, when we train stalls, we're looking to minimize altitude loss. But that's not really what we do nowadays. Nowadays, at least certainly in the airline world, what we're looking to do is not get a secondary stall. Or not get a secondary impending stall, secondary stick shaker. And the way we do that, folks, those of you that are transitioning, maybe like my student today, from a... Lear 60 or a CRJ or really any other jet that has the engines mounted on the tail, a really good way to nose up into a secondary, potential secondary stall is to be aggressive on the thrust application. Let me pose a question to you really quick. Those of you maybe have flown gliders before, or maybe not, it doesn't matter. If you're in a glider, can you stall it? Can you stall a glider? Of which, of course, the answer is yes. It's an airfoil and you can stall any airfoil, right? So you can stall a glider. Well, can you recover the glider from the stall? Yes. Okay. What does that tell you about thrust required for stall recovery? You don't need any. You don't need any thrust to recover from a stall. Stall recovery is not a function of thrust application. Stall recovery is a function of angle of attack reduction. Let me say it again and say it slower. Stall recovery is not because I add power. It's because I reduce angle of attack. Focus on angle of attack reduction in your stall recoveries, and this is how you are going to ensure you do not get secondary stalls and stick shakers, etc., right? Um, the reason I bring up those of you that have flown maybe airplanes that have the tail mount, the engines mounted on the tail, MD-80, uh, 717, Lear 60, Hawker, uh, Gulfstream, CRJ products, right? Um, is because when, when you're flying an, air, an aircraft like a 73 or 320, really any airplane that has the engine mounted under the wings, right? An Embraer 170, a 747, 777, I think you get the point. With thrust application comes a significant nose-up tendency. And if you're aggressive on thrust application, the nose comes up quite aggressively, and it could drive you towards a secondary stall. So be easy on the thrust application. Be mindful that you really don't need any thrust to recover from a stall. And the only reason we really do apply thrust is to minimize altitude loss, but really... The way we're training stalls nowadays is to ensure that we lower angle of attack, reduce the AOA, and recover from the stall and not get a secondary stick shaker or a secondary impending stall. But minimizing altitude loss is not first priority. Ensuring we don't get a secondary stall is the first priority. Um, those of you that are instructors, want to be instructors, maybe you, you're not sure, but you want to potentially become an instructor in the future and you want to join us, I do want to tell you we're hiring instructors. We're looking for students. We're looking for instructors. We're looking for staff. We're looking for everybody. Uh, if you live in Miami, great. If you don't and you still want to teach for us virtually, you can. Um, it does require you get AX3 certified. Folks, I'm telling you, I am telling you with the utmost certainty, there is no fundamentals of instruction course near what AX3 is. At this point, we've got a little over 20 instructors certified through the program. The response is phenomenal. We had an airline send uh, four, uh, actually five guys and gals through as a little beta test. We've got another 20 plus coming from same carrier next month and the numbers are only going up from there. Point I'm making is this two day course is unlike anything you've seen in terms of how to deliver instruction. So I really hope you become certified. AX3certification.com is where you wanna go to get certified. Um, I'm the only person that teaches this class right now. It's a two-day course, and then we do two annual workshops every year for life. Um, so really hope you join us at, at that webpage if you want to instruct. Maybe you want to teach for us, by the way. Maybe you don't want to teach and you just want to learn more with us. That's great. 737-A320-CRJ. We can help you out. OneStepPrep.com. It's the number one. And also, I'd like to mention we have a full-blown 142 Academy, One Step Prep Academy. So if you want to train initial, recurrent, upgrade, circling, restriction, removal, recall, maybe you've been out of the game for a while, you want to come back. Maybe you want to rent a sim with us. Shoot, maybe you just want to do a couple hours with myself, with Juan, with one of our instructors um, in person or virtually. Definitely reach out and um, we'll set it up. Love nothing more than to work with you and uh, get you spooled up, get you feeling confident uh, and make sure that you're not just competent but confident going into all your training events and going into all of your flights, all right? Joe Munoz is a name, Juan Dominguez, your friends and training program success. Really, really look forward to working with you all. And as always, if you're in Miami, stop by, head to the website and send us a message there. We always get back to your emails, phone calls, 
either OneStepPrep.com, OneStepPrepAcademy.com for the 142 uh, school. If you're looking to do type ratings and what have you, we definitely want to play a role in your training program success. All right, like, subscribe, share, drop your comments below. Look forward to reading them always and responding back and hope to see you here pretty soon in Miami.